How to create a Stripe business account. Good day folks and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to take you through the steps to create a Stripe business account and we're going to get straight into it. So the first thing you want to do is go up into your browser of your choice and type in stripe.com. This is what it looks like up over here. You can see that and once you've done so we're going to get to this page. So if you do already have an account, this video is not for you, but if you don't, we're going to tap on the Start Now button on the bottom of the page. This page will offer you a bunch of information about Stripe and the services and prices and costs that it offers. So you can go ahead and go through that as you please. The first thing you want to do is create your Stripe account by entering an email address, your full name, and then the country of residence, as well as a password to your account and then you want to check the box down over here that says get emails from Stripe about product updates and so forth if you would like to get those emails. The next thing you want to do is open your Gmail account so that you can verify your Stripe account. Here we are in the email and we can just tap on verify email. We'll now have to go through the steps of actually creating the account. So if you'd like to skip this, you can go up to the top right hand side. It says skip and activate your account. But we would like to set this up properly. So once we get in, we can start using it. So the first thing is, what would you like to do? So you could either accept payments online or in person. You can manage subscriptions and recurring billing. You can create and send branded invoices, and then you can run a platform or a marketplace. So you can go ahead and choose the appropriate option for you. And if you would like to view additional options, there is a view more options. We're going to go ahead and say continue with payments. We will now have to choose how we start collecting our payments all the way from sharing a link to a checkout page a manual charge for a customer you can also invoice a customer you can use a pre-built payment form which you will build in the platform and then you can build a custom payment ui and then we've got the charge customers in person option over here so whichever best suits you you're going to go ahead and you are going to select the one that you would like once you tap on one of the options, it actually opens it in a new window. So this is the area where you will enter in your payment details. If you would like to set up more than one payment collection type, you can go ahead and click on whichever one you'd like, and you can just go and set it up in the window that it opens up. Right now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to set up this first option, which is share a link to a checkout page. We're going to go in here. So on the left hand side over here, it says select type. So it's either product or subscription. So product or subscription will be best for e-commerce or software as a service. And then the customer choose what to pay. And then this is best for tipping donations or a pay what you want option. We're going to go ahead and we're going to say product and subscriptions and Right over here, we have the payment page. So the product over here, it says you will have to find or add a test product. So we can just go ahead and say add new product. And over here, you will have to add a test product so that we can build your payment method and we can test if it actually works. So from a name, description, price and an image, which is optional, then we can tap on add product. You can now see that there are a few options. You can either collect customers' addresses. You can require your customers to provide a phone number. You can then also limit the number of payments per customer. We also have some advanced options. You can add some custom fields over here. So if you open that, you can see that on the right-hand side, this window as your preview will allow you to add custom fields and on the left hand side over here, you can see that there is a text, numbers only, and a drop down menu. You can now enter that label name. You can set limits and you can mark it as optional. We're going to leave that out for now. You can also allow promotional codes. You can allow business customers to provide tax IDs. And then you can save payment details for future use, which is fantastic. We can also change what the call to action button looks like so it can either be pay book donate and once you have put all of this detail in over here on the right hand side you can tap on create link so this is now your home page or your dashboard and you can see that your test product is over here you can actually copy this link to your clipboard 
and then you can actually receive payment for this product. Over here you can see that there is a breakdown of the actual product and your homepage basically just gives you an overview of your account. On the left hand side you can see that there are a few different tabs such as payments, balances, customers, billing and there's a few more options. Now what we want to do here is at the top it says test mode and it says currently viewing test data you will now need to activate your account to go live so on the right hand side we have the activate account button and we're going to tap on that on this page we'll have to choose a business location as well as a type of business you can now start entering some details about your business such as the name of the business as well as as you go down the employer identification number the doing business as which would be your trading name and then your registered business address country and the actual physical address and the industry you're going to go down now and you have the option to enter your business website and the product description so more or less what kind of service or what kind of product your business is selling. You will now have to enter your first name, your last name, your email address, date of birth, your home address, your phone number, and then the last four digits of your social security number. On this page you will have to enter in how you fulfill orders. So in order to help Stripe keep your business compliant, we need to know a little bit more about how you provide goods or services. So do you sell physical or not? And then on average, how long after paying will your customers typically receive their goods? So you can go ahead now and there's a drop down menu. You can go ahead and you can select one option from the menu. The next page offers public details for customers, so your statement description over here, this is basically what will go on a, a bank statement, then the shortened description, the customer support phone number, so you can offer your customers some support, as well as the customer support address, the country including the actual physical address, and you're going to go ahead and tap on continue. This is the first part of setting up the account, which is the verification of your business. The next thing you'll do over here is add your banking details to receive payment. So you can see over here there are a bunch of options and if you have not seen your bank over here you can just go ahead there's a search bar you can start typing and you can select your bank from here alternatively you can enter the banking details manually instead if you just tap on that you can see here you've got a routing number an account number and then you can just confirm your account number and tap on save once you're done here, you're going to hit continue. You want to keep your account secure over here and you want to put on the two-step authentication. So there are a few ways you can do that. You can either use an authenticator app, you can add a security key, you can use Windows Hello or you can use SMS. Now whichever one you choose over here, you can go ahead and tap on continue. Getting into the automate sales tax calculation over here, you can go ahead and you can select your product category. So over here, there are a bunch of options. If you can't find your option, there is a search bar over here. And you can go through and select the one that you fall under. If you want to skip the step for now, it is actually optional. You can go ahead and tap on skip for now. You now have a climate contribution tab, and this is also optional. So you can go ahead and show your clients your climate commitment. So you can set your contribution from 0.5% of your revenue to 1% to 1.5. Or you can tap on the start contributing after my business has processed. And then you can enter an amount over there. You can then tap on continue with the 1.5% or whichever one is your option of choice. Or... As I said earlier, this is optional. You can go ahead and tap on no thanks. So this last page is a summary of all the details that you entered in. And basically you have the opportunity to review all of your information. There is an agree and submit button at the bottom. You're going to tap on that and your account will be active. There we go, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to drop us a like. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions, you can leave it in the comment section below and we'll see you in another awesome video. Cheers for now, folks.